Old Venture. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Old Venture. names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Old Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Take the wheel, sailor. Steady as she goes. What's the matter? You tired? Want to get some sleep? I'll sleep in Havana. Right now, I want to stand back and admire those jeans you bought in Key West. You twisted my arm. Like them? I don't know. I kind of have my heart set on something with fringe, something frilly and feminine. Well, they've got copper rivets. How frilly can you get? <laughs> I don't know about you, sailor. You begged me for a week to take you on a shopping trip. You finally wheedled me into it. Wheedle, he says. I darn your socks, do KP. If we had a lawn, you'd have had me mowing it. So what's wheedle? Oh, I made you earn your money. What do you do with it? Buy a pair of cowboy pants. You picked them out yourself. You said they did something for me. They do, sailor. They do. And for me, too. They... Hey, wait a minute. Not sure if I... Because you want me to walk up and down for you? So you can admire me some more? Now, there's something out there on the water drifting through the mist. Turn it on, sailor. Aye, aye. Swing it over to starboard. Yeah. It's a lifeboat just drifting. People in it, say. They look... They're lying there huddled in a heap. Pull up alongside, sailor, quick. Bring her in close. Ahoy! Ahoy! They can't answer you, Slate. They're... Yeah. Hold her tight, sailor. I'm going to board her. Steady. Closer. A little closer. Okay, cut your motors. What's wrong, Slate? What's the matter? Four men, machine gun, dead. Slate, come back. Whoever did it tried to sink him. Boat's riddled, too. Look at those rips in her topside. Stuffed up with bloody pieces of clothes. Rags. One of them must have lived a little while. Who does things like that? Here's a packet of hardtack lying here. Stenciled Mary Kay. Throw me a line, sailor. We just bought ourselves a funeral. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Buck. Grab yourself a chair. You got something for me, Buck? One hundred five dollar bills, fifty ten dollar bills, new, crisp, and American. Here. Hold on to the dough till we get outside. In the bank, when I changed the money into clean bills, the clerk asked me how I came by such filthy currents. And you put a finger to your trim mustache and told him what? That I was a rent collector in the barrio. I can arrange for another shipment very shortly. I can use some more money. <laughs> the simplicity of it. Refugees who get somehow into Cuba then want to sneak into the States at $500 per sneak. Load them on the Mary Kay. Sail the boat in circles for a few hours. Tell the people that we are near Key West. Put them in a lifeboat. Shoot them. Sing the lifeboat. No trace back to us, the American phrase is, is it not? No trace back. It'll do. Take your places in line, senor, senorita. There are many who have priority over you. Now, look, Chico, I told you the harbor police sent us over. Once around you, senor Shannon, all these people who wait have tried to seduce from me a hearing with the Port Authority. Each with his own feeble excuse. They sit, they wait. You will do the same. Get off your fat desk, Chico. Maybe you can convince easier. Off your... Put him down, Slate. I've got a better way. This matter of manhandling an official... 
However, thank you for your kindness, senorita. We found a lifeboat drifting in the Caribbean. With four dead men in it. Oh, I pity for your limpid eyes to gaze upon such things. And the packet marked Mary Kay. The Mary Kay. You saw this? You are proof positive? Better than that. We'll accept no substitutes. Not even for you, Chico. Get us to your boss. Of course, naturally. One moment. Immediately. See how easy it is, Slate? Yeah. I wish I had limp eyes. Limp it. I'll put it in your diary, sailor, how a blown-up little man once said to you. Please to go in you both. Senor Estrella will speak to you of your mother. Troy kiss, sailor. He did peachy. Uh-uh. It might spoil him for somebody else. Come on. Senor Buck, here is Alfredo Vincenti. Listen well, senor. Two are here, Shannon and Duval. They are heavy with knowledge of the Mary Kay. Excellente. And for me, a hundred dollars will be a joy. It is of no moment to me what you do to them. Forever thank you, Senor Buck. What you tell me is uh, most interesting, Senor Shannon. Four dead men in a boat, senor, shot to death. Huh? Interesting. When I turned the boat over to the harbor police, I told them I thought the men had been machine gunned to death. They agreed. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that's pretty interesting. Four dead men, machine gunned, drifting around in the middle of the ocean. Let's go, Slate. We're boring the man. Uh, please, senorita. The lady's right. What do we have to do to get a rise out of you? Just tell me about this small carton here. The hard tack? The hard tack, senor. I mean the words printed on the carton. The Mary Kay? Look, how much do you have to explain to the Port Authority? The Mary Kay is the name of a boat. Named the Mary Kay. I know, I know. Now I will tell you something. One year ago, the Mary Kay leave Havana for Hanoi. She picked up a load of unbleached linen at San Domingo. And what I'm going to tell you next, senor, senorita, this will be interesting. I doubt it, but go ahead. The Mary Kay has not been heard of since. <laughs> Why don't you try to get some rest, Slade? You haven't slept since we left Key West. That eats me. That eats me why four men are machine gunned in an open boat after burning the sun left to the seagulls. Don't think about it anymore. We've done all we can do. Four guys with their mouths open in a scream, screaming across an empty sea. Nobody to hear them. The authorities have got it, Slade. Let them keep it. Belongs to them. Yeah. It interests them. Isn't that what the man said? That it interested him? That was just his way of saying it bothered him. Four dead men off a boat that hasn't been heard of in a year. There aren't many words for that. Yeah. Could have shed an official tear, had a catch in his throat. Whatever is the standard operating emotion when four men die who didn't want to die. It's in their hands, Slate. Don't try to take it away from them. It might hurt you more. I've seen men dead like that. In a war. Never on a tropical sea. That's for living like you dreamed. Reaching out your hand. I know. It's what I've got. Well, what can I do, Slate, to wash that look out of your eyes? Hey, the door to my office is closed, Buster. It's a cricket here to knock first. I'm certain you will forgive me because tragedy does not wait to knock upon the door. We've got our own troubles, mister. Settle yours somewhere else. This thing of the Mary Kay has brought anguish to all of us, has it not, Miss Alice? And what do you know about the Mary Kay? Only that six months ago, my brother booked passage on her was never seen again. That's impossible. The Mary Kay was reported lost at sea a year ago. This is not so. Six months ago, my brother bought it. Let's take it to the cops. Things like this to interest them, they tell me. Please, hear me out. My brother was a refugee illegally in this country, trying to gain entry into the States illegally on the Mary Kay. I am in all ways like my brother. Now we know why you can't go to the police. That leaves the, the question of why I am here. To take you to a man who knows everything of the Mary Kay. To ask you to plead with him for a morsel about my brother. To ask him if my brother's destiny was similar to the men whom you found. Huh? How do you know about that? In the barrio, in the place of the lost and the not wanted, word comes to us. We scavenge for it. You will come with me to the Cafe Pollo, where he is. Both of you? Just me. I'll need her to come back to. 
My friend will be delighted to see you, Mr. Shannon. I'm happy for your friend. Still haven't told me who he is. His own identification he will reveal. I am not at liberty. Ed, please, in here. He is here, my captain. The captain of what? Captain Dana. Sit down, Shannon. Oh, thanks. You're going to tell me about the Mary Kay? Sure. I'll pour your coffee for you, Shannon. You like coffee? I could use some. Ah, that's fine coffee. Oh, I once sailed aboard up the Orinoco. I brought all the coffee beans back with me, the boat would hold. My captain is a gentleman of exquisite taste. You said you sailed a boat. Your own? My own. A schooner. Named the Mary Kay? Uh-huh. Isn't that delightful? Oh. Mary Kay. Yeah. Open a window. You. Hey, uh, I'm talking to you. Open it. Something wrong, Mr. Shannon? Ah, uh, stuffy. Let's see. What about the Mary Kay, Captain? Tell me. You found a boat, Shannon. That boat was off my ship. Oh, it couldn't be. Mary Kay. I've heard from for a year. Sunk, probably. Not sunk. She's lying in a cove down the coast. Huh? You're beginning to look like a man who hasn't had it too easy, Shannon. Huh? Uh, something in that... Something in that coffee. Dope me. Don't fight it, Shannon. I gotta... <laughs> Got to get out of here. Here. Got it. I'll not let him get them. Don't worry about it. What Shannon needs is some nice sea air. <laughs> My captain is so understanding. <laughs> Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Lady Sailor, she go on buying spree to get for herself some finery. She pose and she strut, then she cry in her throat. For in the ocean sea are four dead in a boat. She cried to Mr. Slate, what do they there? These dead men sailing in the cold, cold air. Mr. Slate, he say, we ask authority. For such things are no man's destiny. That's just about the way he said it, King. I know how Mr. Slate feel inside about such things. That's why I try to give it song. <laughs> You're good, King. You ought to go into the business. The business of explaining people to themselves? <laughs> I do not own a doctor's couch. All I have in the world is a guitar and a calypso song. And Slate and me. Yes, and Mr. Slate and Lady Sailor. But one of you is now missing. That man was taking him to the Cafe Pollo. He said that... I know the Cafe Pollo. Oh? What about it, King? Only that if men do not return from it in a proper interval of time, they should be called for. You're telling me to... To, to go find Mr. Slate, to bring him back. Yeah. The joint doesn't run so good without him, does it? Keep a light in the window for us, King. You are looking for something, Mr. Duvel? Refreshment, perhaps? A slate. Where is he? It is a world of coincidences, my Mr. Duvel. I'll take it up with you later. Right now, all I want is slate. A world of coincidences because I was about to go looking for you. So I saved your trolley fare. That wins me a prize. Slate Shannon. <laughs> A woman like you. Any man in the world would grovel at your feet and all you want is... <laughs> because he doesn't grovel. <laughs> Slate came here with you because you wanted help about your brother on the Mary Kay. When he left here, did he tell you where he was going? No. But I will take you to him. Uh, I'll find him myself. I will take you to him, Mr. Val. This gun in my coat pocket says you cannot deny me this moment. Huh? This gun. Oh, that's what I like about you. 
You're so helpless. Lead on, gun. <laughs> How do you feel, Shannon? The sea air kissing your back with us? Uh, how about you put in that coffee? The recipe my galley cook taught me. Good, huh? I had better in Malaya. They laid me up for three days. They thought I was dead. Don't get eager, Shannon. This time you'll be dead for real. From the lousy coffee? From bullets from this Tommy gun. Like what you did to the four men I found in your lifeboat, huh? Just like that. Only this time, nobody finds anything. You want me to ask you why? All right. See, I'm asking why. Good question. Because when you found that lifeboat, found it was off the Mary Kay, you became a refugee. Like those other people at the other end of this boat? Just like that. Except they pay me 500 a head to die. You get yours for nothing. Free. They think they're going to America. You can't do that to those people. They've scraped, they've begged, they've cried against alley walls. What happened to you, Dana? And what slime did you get sick? <laughs> I'm generous. I'm going to take these poor hulks aboard the Mary Kay, give them a break. Sail them around a little. Let them get a snip at what they've been dreaming about. Listen to me, you people. They'll kill you. You'll never get what you want. You're talked out of turn, Shannon. <laughs> Get back, you filth. Get back. You want to see the Mary Kay, don't you? Ah, that's good. Just be nice little refugees and Captain Dane will find your home. Down those steps. Into the hole. Ah, for you. I said down those steps. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry about that entrance. I was pushed. Lady, of these four of us, the rest, they do not understand your speech. Only I. The other one, the one in the corner, speaks nothing. What are you doing here? Nearing the end of a dream. They're going to America. You mean you're entering the States illegally? And for the same $500 which you have paid. Sit down with us and... Uh... One of your friends sounds like he's getting paradise the hard way. The one in the corner? Oh, oh my head. Where am I? Slate. Slate, this is Sailor. What happened to you? Uh, Sailor? How did you get here? If I'd have known that man was taking me to you, I'd have gone quietly. He wouldn't have needed a gun. Uh, what man? A boy who took you to the Cafe Poyo. You followed me, huh? Do you know what you got yourself into? I know. This is the Mary Kay... The phantom ship lives in this rotting cove, sails to sea with people without passports, that gives them to the sea, dead. Those people are refugees? Those four over there watching us? Yeah. The only difference is we get the ride free. You people down there, we're saying sail. Just relax. It'll take no time at all. <laughs> going to be tough, sailor. Getting them to believe us. They've been promising America to themselves for who knows how long. You've got to make them understand. That one's Slate, the tall man in the leather jacket. He's the only one who speaks English. Oh, let's try. You, mister. Laszlo Vonick. Slate Shannon. Mr. Val uh, tells me you speak English. Poorly. You've got an idea you're going to America. You're wrong. What are you saying? The men who sail this boat are lying to you. They've taken your money. They're going to load you in a boat. They're going to spray you with machine gun bullets. Please, slowly. They're going to kill all of us and dump us into the ocean. We go to America. You'll never see it, Vanek. A chest. A trick. Call it anything you like, mister. You don't believe what I'm telling you? Ducks. You, me, your friends, Mr. Val. Dead ones. There's sincerity in your face. However, we cannot turn aside a dream for that. Look... Listen to me. Yesterday, four men were picked up at sea. They were in a small boat. I have knowledge of this from the newspaper. That boat was off this schooner. You're lying. Off this boat. The Mary Kay. By the time I get you to believe it, it'll be too late. I need your help. It 
So close to America. You've never been further away. He would kill you if you lied. I'd expect you to. Speak some more to me. In a little while, that door up there will open. A man will come through. He'll probably have a Tommy gun. Good people. Lucky people. Stand up. On your feet. Perhaps you did not understand me. I shall repeat myself. Just tell us once what you're doing with that Tommy gun in your hands. Keep your lovely lips shut, Miss Duvern. A Tommy gun makes you a big man, doesn't it, Buck? Why don't you answer the lady? Just stand aside, Shannon. I'm talking to these people. I am their friend. They tell us they are our friends. They tell us you are not. They tell us you wish to kill us. Up those steps. Tell the others quickly. This quick enough. Get the better. You got a good aim, sailor. He's not going to make much noise with your handkerchief in his mouth. And tell him not to chew it into shreds. It's the only one I got with my initials on it. Now what, Mr. Shannon? Now pick up that gun. Yes. I know. We're going on deck. You and your people will take care of the crew. And you? I want Dana all to myself. And what do I do? Up on deck, there's going to be a Tommy gun sailor. It sprays bullets. You stay here. Find something heavy and amuse Bach with it. If you say so. Uh, Bucky, old boy, it's just you and me. If you blink an eyelash, I'm going to let you have it right where you think. <laughs> That's my sailor. Come on, Vanek. There's the wheel shelter, Vanek. There's a man up forward. You're on your own. Good luck, Mr. Shannon. Yeah. Mm. That's you, Buck? They loaded? No, they're not loaded. Shannon. Well, well. Now, who's going to be sorry for who? Now, tell me what happened. <laughs> that happened. I've thrown your crew into the ocean, my captain. Before you try to find the gun, try this first. I like it better to try it any way you want. Yeah, I'll pass it on. Your trip's over, Captain. The boat's in our hands, Mr. Shannon. We'll head her back to Havana. No. This we cannot do. We have come too far to turn back. You will take the power launch and return to Havana. We will take our chances. I'll uh, pick you up. You'll never make it. We will take our chances. Okay. Suit yourself. How'd you make out, sailor? Three hits, no errors. How about you? I'll tell you about it on the way home. Well, Slate? Well, what? I've been standing in front of you for ten minutes at parade rest. Haven't you noticed anything? Hmm, let me look. Oh, you're wearing fingernail polish. Notice anything else? Hmm, shoes with heels. That's right. Keep trying. Oh, oh, you mean the dress. I didn't notice. If you wore one, I'd notice. <laughs> oh, you've seen one dress, you've seen them all, I always say. Oh, is that what you always say? I always say... Come here. Why do you always talk so much? A girl likes to call attention to... to herself. Why do I always talk so much? And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture.